So first, um, I'll talk about App Exchange just briefly, but like Apple has the App Store and Google has Google Play, Salesforce has the App Exchange, and we have over 2,800 apps on the App Exchange. And then today, we're going to focus specifically on the apps that are out there for customer service. But these apps allow you to take your core Salesforce and extend that productivity and the value you get from Salesforce across all your departments, across any industry, and really helps you solve business problems, which is what you're going to hear from our panelists today. And we put them into collections and categories on the App Exchange to make it easy for you. And one of the collections within customer service are the apps for telephony and CTI. And that helps you have productivity for your reps that are on the phone and have that telephony connectivity. You're going to hear a lot about surveys and survey apps. And you'll actually hear from our panelists some unique ways they're using survey apps that go beyond getting feedback and providing insights from a customer service standpoint. But I don't want to give anything away yet. And then agent productivity. We have 81 apps for agent productivity. And for field service, that's a big topic. So there are a lot of apps that really help your field, folks in the field be more productive. And at the end of our panelists, we're going to kind of loop back around and take a deeper look into some of these specific apps and some others that, that are additional as well. So this session will give you a good breadth of the apps that are out there, as well as a deep dive into the apps these panelists are using. But one thing to pay attention to is apps with that little blue beaker. And does anyone know what that little blue beaker means on the App Exchange? Yes, one person. Great. I will share it with the rest of the group. They're called Salesforce Lab apps. And they're designed, they're apps that are created by either Salesforce employees or our customers. And then we share them out on the App Exchange. And so they're free and they're available to you. They're really useful because they've been designed to solve a business problem. And then they're shared out. They're not supported. So that's a non-supported app. It's not a Salesforce solution. But it is um, a really incredibly useful collection on the App Exchange. So when you see that little blue beaker, that means it's part of Salesforce Lab apps. And those apps are always free. So we have um, more than ever, and this collection is growing, our mobile-ready apps. And we've made it easy for you to see that on the App Exchange with that blue banner. So it says Salesforce One Mobile, and those are mobile ready for your organization. So as you're looking at the collection of apps and specifically for customer service, you'll be able to easily identify the ones that are mobile ready with that blue sash. And I'll give you a quick overview of navigating the App Exchange. But you can sort a lot of different ways. So you can sort by looking at the new, the popular, the free apps. You can also browse collections. So we talked about if you want to take a look at the mobile apps, if you want to slice and dice by the free new mobile apps, it lets you do that. But then you can also really filter and drill down by category. So for today's context, you can look at customer service, and then you can go deeper into field service. And then you can also filter based on your industry. So if you want to see specifically the apps available for customer service within your industry, you can get down to that level of detail when you're on the App Exchange. So if you haven't gone out to the App Exchange, played around, looked at what's there, if this session inspires you to do that, then that's, um, we're happy with that because there's a lot out there for you. And then we'll talk a little bit later, too. You'll hear from the panelists how they choose apps, but popularity and rating. So you can see which apps are most popular. And those will be, um, they often come to the top. And you can see the rating. There's also reviews. So it's important to look at the rating, but also to understand the review in the context of your company. So go ahead and click through and read the review. And there may be something um, consistently positive about the review, but also if there's something that maybe isn't as positive, always just ask yourself, 
does that affect my company? Just because that review wasn't as positive for that company, what business problem am I trying to solve and how does that relate to me? But the beauty of it is there's a wealth of information to help you make those initial decisions on the app exchange. So I'm going to um, turn it over to our panelists in a moment, and that's really um, probably one of the most important parts of this session, is hearing from other customers who have been on the journey. So Stephanie is with AOL, and she's going to share how she had quick wins in her organization using the App Exchange. And we have Tyler Garman with Rosetta Stone, and they're going to share their journey with a perspective of how they've used the app exchange to get a 360 degree view of their customer. And then Doug Jones with NCR Silver is gonna talk about the apps he uses for productivity. And he's really gonna share the metrics as it relates to the business impact. So I am going to turn this over to Stephanie. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so my name is Stephanie Dorman. I am working currently with AOL. I've been with AOL for about two years now. And they brought me in after they purchased Salesforce and they had all of these licenses, and then they were sitting there looking for an implementation partner to do the implementation. So they're paying for licenses which aren't really getting used. Um, and we came in, or I came in, and we started using the apps to get quick wins in the organization. We use 12 apps right now. Um, we'll probably have another 12 by the end of this year. We <laughs> use Avaya for our CTI um, because they're our CTI provider. We use a lot of different stuff for administration, reporting, project management, keeping everything inside Salesforce. And we are working on upgrading some of our apps where we started with a lower price point and we're moving on to something bigger. So I'll start with one of those stories. It's Timba Surveys. It's a great free app. You can go out, install it. It works out of the box pretty quickly. Um, it's easy to go create a survey, and what we used it for was to survey our agents. So we were doing this large implementation, moving off of an old system, and we used it to send out surveys to the agents to see what they wanted in the system. And it was nice because it collated all of the information into Salesforce for all of our product owners to see. Um, we started looking into it to get off of our old survey platform to our customers, but one of the limitations of it is it's a free service, so it doesn't allow you to really do branding like our marketing team wanted us to. So this is a situation where we're actually going to end up moving to a paid app, which is SurveyMonkey, um, in the next two months, I think, is what we're aiming for which is great because SurveyMonkey is another one that integrates right into Salesforce. All of your reporting comes out of it. They have all different kinds of licensing and everything. It's, um, it's going to be really cool for our organization. But I don't think we would have gotten the buy-in for SurveyMonkey if we hadn't had the success that we did with Timba Surveys. So. The next thing I want to talk about is Radian 6 and the social connector. So how many of you guys are doing social listening at your company right now for like Twitter? So basically AOL. OK. <laughs> so Radian 6 is an app or a software that Salesforce provides. And what the social connector does is it allows you to take all of the social listening that we sit and listen for tweets and Facebook posts and news articles, anything that mentions AOL or any of our topics out there. And then it creates cases inside Salesforce for our agents to go action. Um, we used to use TweetDeck to do this, so we had absolutely no tracking besides tick sheets. Um, and we had no historical reference point besides literally going into the Twitter or Facebook account and reading what was on the Twitter or Facebook account. So this connector was, we hooked this up a year ago. It has really improved our social team's visibility in the company, um, the reporting and metrics. They have a newsletter that goes out now that goes to the entire company. It's really cool. 
And one of the greatest things is it has really allowed us to action on items before the customer even calls us. So we found out that people might tweet about an outage before they pick up a phone to call us and tell us that there's an outage, which is really useful to send our mail team on it. So by the time people call us, we're like, oh, we're already on that, guys. Thanks. <laughs> the last thing that I want to talk about is labs. Um, how many of you guys have used labs before in your orgs? OK, so a couple people. Everybody should be using labs, especially the reporting packages. Um, we use Chatter Reports and Dashboards, which is a great package. It comes out with, I think, 40 reports total. That is a great starting point for any of the Chatter Reports you need. We also use the CRM Dashboards, which has all of your call metrics, average handled time, um, agent and productivity reports in it. I think that one has 50 or so reports and maybe three dashboards. And then there's also a knowledge one that is a really great start. If any of you guys have knowledge, they have a really weird database structure with the version history and everything. So it's a really great um, place to start. We have our, at AOL, there's me as an administrator and then a whole bunch of product owners. And these reports really help me because I can go forth and say, here's kind of what you want. Go ahead and click Save As and customize it how you want it to. So it's really decreased our ramp time to get these users creating their own reports. There's also another one that I use called Project Management, um, which isn't on this slide. If you guys are administrators in your org and you're looking for a project management tool, the Project Management Labs app is great. And it's customizable, so you can put your own fields in and do everything like that. Um, I am going to head it off to Tyler now. All right, thanks, Stephanie. And uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. It's Friday, so I'm glad you guys are here again. And uh, my name is Tyler Garman, and I work for Rosetta Stone. And so we uh, make language learning software. And so uh, the f question that everybody asks is, how many languages can I speak? I'm going to answer that. I only speak English. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, we teach the world a number of different languages. Um, who wants to guess what the top selling language that Rosetta Stone sells is? Chinese. Chinese. Somebody heard it. English is over there. It's kind of a trick question. But yeah, so English is our number one selling language. We have. Um, Lots of people coming to the US and traveling are learning English for business and different things like that. And uh, Spanish is actually the second highest as well. And some of the other ones I heard Chinese is out there as well that, um, that also do well for us. Um, I've been with Rosetta Stone for seven years. Um, I've worked in our uh, call centers doing product support for our B2B um, customers. And I've really enjoyed that a lot and have recently, as in three weeks ago, transferred to the Salesforce administrator role and been able to see a lot of the back end of how we use Salesforce. Um, and so I'm really excited to tell you about some apps that I've used as a user and then now I've started to use as an administrator as well that have made a big impact and big difference for our company. So we use um, approximately around 40 apps um, for Rosetta Stone across two different instances. And that sound, might sound like a lot of apps, and it is a lot of apps. Um, we really enjoy going to the App Exchange to solve a lot of the issues that we run into um, and business problems that we need to solve at Rosetta Stone. Um, so you can see Timba Survey we use. We'll talk a little bit more about Cloud Dingo and Bombgar. Um, but a, a lot of different ones for our sales organization, for marketing, for service, um, a lot of excellent apps out there um, for all those different departments that, that you guys can check out. The three that I really want to focus on today, um, the first one is, is Bombgar. How many of you have heard of Bombgar or use Bombgar to organizations? Excellent. OK. So if you're not familiar, Bombgar is a remote support tool. So if you have product support teams that um, customers are calling in and you have trouble figuring out their issue, you can actually take control of their computer. Um, they click on a couple of links, and then you can move the mouse for them. You can make all of the clicks for them. You can annotate the screen and show them where to go. And it's really helpful, as you can imagine, when somebody doesn't know how to set up a headset or something like that. It is very helpful for us. Um, so this is a tool that's used across all of our support organizations and saves us a lot of time. 
And the app that Bongar has with Salesforce provides a seamless integration uh, into the, our Salesforce instance for service. And what this helps us do is it automatically updates the cases with the details from the Bongar interaction. So previously, we would have instances where uh, if there was a, a problem on a support call or something, uh, we would have to get permission to download the session and to view chat transcripts and things like that um, from our BombGuard administrators. And it was just a lot of work, and so we ended up missing a lot of that data. Um, this brings all of that right into Salesforce, and it puts it on the case uh, and lists all the information there, as well as the post um, post-session survey that Bomgar has. So you know, how did the session go? Was it solved? Those kind of questions. All of that's listed right um, on the case. And that's been really helpful for, first of all, our service managers who can go back and review those cases. But it's also been really helpful for our product development teams. So if they have questions about, you know, why isn't this product working? Why are our customers calling us? They can actually go into the case and review those sessions and can see, OK, this is what the customer's clicking on. This is what they thought the, you know, the flow should be for the process. And we've actually gained a lot of really good insight from that, um, being able to link it to our accounts and our cases um, through Salesforce, which has been really helpful. All right, the second app that I want to talk about today is, a, is an excellent app. This, is a, this has been a wonderful one that we've been able to use at Rosetta Stone, and it's called Field Trip. Now, how many of you have fields in Salesforce that nobody ever uses? Couple people out there, okay? Yeah, they're they're out there. They exist. What Field Trip does, and this has been a vital tool for us as administrators, is it allows you to run reports on field usage, okay? So you can take a report um, on any of the standard objects or any custom objects that you have, and you can find out how many fields have actually been populated um, on a particular record. Um, which is, which is really amazing. You know, a lot of times people come to you and they say, you know, hey, can you add this field onto this record? And you say, well, we already have you know, all of these fields. You know, we don't need an extra field. Or they, you want to remove a field that's not being used. And for some reason, people want to hold on to it for nostalgia's sake or for some other reason. You can pull a report that actually shows hard data to say that you know, this field hasn't been used in the last year and nobody's populated it. And so it really helps us clean up our data. Um, it helps us clean up our fields and our page layouts so that when agents go to look at a, pa a field or a page, um, any unnecessary you know, information is not there and we can clear that out of the way. Just a couple of numbers um, around this app. So on our contact object, we have about 7.7 uh, 7 .7 million records um, currently. And th yeah, this is kind of hard, but <laughs> there are... Um, 18 fields on, on our contact record that are populated 100% of the time. And we have 164 fields. So 18 fields are populated 100% of the time. Between 50 and 99%, there's 11 fields that are populated, or 11 fields are populated 50 to 99% of the time. We have 71 fields that are populated 0.1 to 49% of the time. And we have 77 fields on that record that are not populated. <laughs> so you can see when we can pull those numbers and we can have that data, if somebody comes to us and says, you know, oh, I really need that field for something, you can say, well, you're not using it. We need to get rid of it because of these reasons that will make uh, everyone's job a little bit more efficient. So excellent app, um, Field Trip. And you guys can check that out in, in the App Exchange. The last app that I want to talk about today um, is called Cloudingo. And this has helped us. How many of you have duplicate records in Salesforce? Everybody's hand goes up, yeah. <laughs> so at some point, there, there, there comes a time where, for whatever reason, you have duplicate records um, in contacts or cases or accounts. Um, we underwent a project in the spring of this year to deduplicate a lot of our data. And I think everyone understands the, the need to deduplicate that, um, you know, have all of your information in one place to get that complete 360 degree view. Um, for Rosetta Stone, one of the things that we had done is we had been using the Sales Cloud for quite some time. And then when Service Cloud came out, we uh, um, adopted that. And then we ended up merging our two instances together. So we ended up having quite a few duplicates between the two clouds. And what Cloudingo allowed us to do, um, along with data.com, was to clean up all of those records to uh, make sure that our data was enriched, that it was good data. And then it, it allowed us to take um, those duplicates and merge them together. 
Um, it's really simple to use. It has really intuitive dashboards uh, so that we can merge and convert. Uh, we could convert leads to contacts um, and merge all these things that were potential duplicates in our system. And so you can see um, from the results as we went through that, uh, we gave a, a complete view of our customer service history because we would have service accounts and we would have sales accounts. And we were able to merge those two together so that our sales reps could see all of the case history um, and things like that to give them a better view of how their clients were doing. Um, we merged 1,400 service accounts and we merged um, 18,500 contacts together, which has given us much better data. Um, it's made everyone's lives a lot easier. And Cloudingo was a, a really efficient and easy to use uh, resource for that. So those are the three that I wanted to share with you today. And I'm going to pass it over to Doug next, who's going to share um, about their apps. Thanks, Tyler. <clears throat> OK, so uh, I'm the rookie of the group. Uh, I've been using uh, Salesforce for 21 months in a row. And um, uh, I, wanna, I, I like to talk about numbers. So uh, you're going to hear a lot of numbers are going to come out of my face here in just a second. So 21 months ago, um, I moved from Dallas, Texas to Atlanta. And I took a new uh, role within the company. I've been with NCR for, for a dozen years. And uh, the first question that I asked my group was, what happens when it snows? They said, well, we have to go to work. Well, they were using Salesforce in a really poor uh, uh, setup. They didn't really have everything put together. There was, it was just real messy. And the phones that they were using were, you ever see Andy Griffith? They have to get a hold of Sarah to, to connect them. That's really the phone that they were using. They really had no idea around technology. They didn't really understand what they needed to do. Uh, as you can tell, you can hear my uh, Texas accent, yeah? All right. So. Um, we had no idea about apps or anything else. So we were thrust into, one, trying to understand what Salesforce could do with us, uh, do for us, what it could do for our, our dollars and cents, and ultimately, what could it do for our business. So we were barely scraping the surface. And in 21 months, um, we have raised our net promoter score. Everybody know what net promoter score is? Yeah? It's the thing you measure happiness, right? We went from minus 39. <laughs> That's bad. I don't know if y'all know that on a scale. Anything minus is bad. <laughs> to a plus 49 in 20 months. And we did it with these specific apps. The first one we're going to talk about is Live Ops. So we took a VoIP system, a, a voice over IP, we put it into our systems. This allowed us to do lots of flexibility. Oh yeah, by the way, remember why I told you I went to Atlanta and I asked, hey, what, did, what do you do when it snows here? Two weeks later, it was snowpocalypse. <laughs> do y'all remember that? Yeah, I was stuck in a hotel for two weeks, yeah, or for, for three days. And then two weeks later, Logan came with me. And we were stuck in another uh, uh, hotel because they had snowpocalypse part two. <laughs> it wasn't as fun as the first. Um, Live Ops gives us the ability to be able to handle a call anywhere on the planet where there's uh, uh, an internet uh, uh, connection. It allows all the different flexibilities. The most important thing that you need to know from an administrator perspective is you capture every single piece of data. If you cannot measure it, you can't manage it. So we wanted to understand every moving point and our old tin can solution on a string didn't give us that opportunity. As a manager, I want to be able to touch that data. I want to be able to move things around. I want to understand what happens here and there. So with LiveOps, we were able to get a simplistic dashboard. We were able to put up the big board up on top, and it would, it would ding and give me all the bells and whistles, and I can see who's on break and who's not, and who's playing a phone game and who's not, and I can tell all the different things. Here's the thing you want to know from the bottom line. We went from a $32.15 uh, cost per transaction every time the phone rang to $9.50 in 21 months, OK? Good decisions with an app can make money for you. Oh yeah, here's another little tidbit. I started there uh, in January of last year, and we had six, 16, seven, 17 reps. We have 17 reps today. We took 2,800 phone calls last January. Um, last month, we did just over 11,000 transactions. Yeah. The next thing that we needed to do is we needed to understand what people were saying about us. How could we, what could we do uh, uh, with feedback? 
So we looked at uh, um, surveying from a different way. Remember the minus 39? Well, here's what we did. We went and we found clip tools. We, we have a complex system of how we have all these different uh, customers inside of our sales force. So we did something really simple. Every one of those customers has an account number. I said, well, let's just make this really easy. On an even numbered month, let's uh, survey the even numbered customers. And on the odd number months, let's survey the odd customers, right? That makes some <laughs> sense. So we did that. And once we started sending the survey, we had to do something with it. So it's not just getting the app, it's what you do with it. I assign one person and every single time we get a, a survey, someone is calling them. That's whether they're a, a, a detractor, a neutral, or a promoter. Whether they're upset by something, they say nothing, someone is contacting them in some way, whether it be through email or whether it be phone. We're reaching out to them. So when we started using the app, to get a response and we're going back out to them, we're getting more people to, to come back in. And you're thinking, well, you probably get a lot of duplicates. Nay, nay. I've got a 31.5% uh, 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 penetration on my uh, net promoter score. Best in class is 14%. And because we're touching every single one of them and the cost is simple, our, uh, our, our happiness goes up. It's a good way to use your money Speaking of money, we, we use live ops and the cost for a call is about 33 cents. That's if you take out all of the, 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 the people perspective and all the other stuff. It takes about 33 cents. It's about a 10 minute average talk time. That's probably similar to most uh, call centers. It's around eight to nine minutes. We had 10 minutes. We looked at it at 33 uh, cents. We're like, hey, this is doing really well. But we have a mobile POS. We have a different dynamic, and we're moving in a different direction. So we deployed uh, live chat last August, or uh, last November, rather. Uh, and, and Logan did it literally over a weekend. Huh, wave. <laughs> That's Logan. OK. We're like, hey, let's do chat. That'd be awesome, right? So we thought about it, and we are like, hey, let's go there. We thought well, we can get about 7 to 9% is what we really, really thought we would be able to deploy with. On day one, 26% of our transactions went to uh, chat. 26. We were amazed. We were like, what the hell did we do? <laughs> that's a lot of chat that's coming in. So we had to understand how we could move with the times. Well, we have a mobile POS. We've got to go into that space. So we thought about it, and we looked around, and we found these people by the name of uh, Haywire. Haywire is helping us revolutionize how we're touching our customers. Haywire allows us to have our, our customers text us directly. They can text and say, hey, I have a question. We have an outage. We have people texting us. So now my utilization rate goes up tenfold. How many calls can one technician handle? One. How many uh, texts have you handled at one time? What, 30? <laughs> at one time. I, I stood behind him like, oh my god, he's Superman. We have a team now dedicated specifically to our chat and social. But here's the really cool thing about Haywire. It's not just inbound text messaging. I can recondition my customers. So I get a phone call, and you have a question about your printer or, or uh, uh, adding an employee. Hey, you know what, Mr. Customer? Rather than sending you an email with a link, let me just text you a, 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 a link real fast of a video or a picture that has the, has the instructions on it. I get it, or I'm still on the phone with them. They like it. What are they going to do next time? Are they going to pick up the phone and call? No. They're going to text. And we're seeing that condition uh, work. We started uh, uh, in June with a, an idea of, hey, let's try to get to 5%. We're going to hope to get to 5% in 60 days. By day 35, 40, we were about 6 7%. So we said, hey, let's, let's get this done. Let's make a deal. Now we're at 9 and 10%. Our alternative uh, contacts are now in the 35 to 36 percentile. Our goal by next July is to be at 43% of our contacts are coming in from chat, from text, and social. And Haywire is helping us do that. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to Michelle. Great. Thank you, Stephanie, Tyler, and Doug. And I have to add that Doug introduced himself as 
a rookie to Salesforce. I think that was the word. But he's an award-winning rookie. So just at yeah. Dreamforce, <laughs> he and his team won the Surfboard Award for Service Cloud Excellence. So you can see how quickly you can add value with Salesforce and with the apps. So congratulations Thank to you both very much. of you for that. So we want to call out a few more apps that we haven't already mentioned. And don't forget to watch your bingo cards as we name these apps so we can have some winners. But these are some of the most popular apps for customer service. And the first one is another one um, for surveys called Form Assembly. And it's, you can see the stars as well. It's almost at five stars with 65 reviews. So um, pay attention to that when you're looking at, at apps but it lets you bring in data um, and pull it into any object, custom or standard. There's also Remedy Force, which is one of the most popular apps for IT help desk. Um, and then um, you can see a Salesforce mobile ready one, email to case. So that lets you extend and improve on the base functionality that's already there in Salesforce for cases. And then the last one, it's called lead assignment, but it's actually lead and case assignment routing. So it will let you round robin leads and cases. And we're gonna touch on a couple more for field service, and then we're gonna um, pose a few questions to the panel in our last five minutes. Um, but the first one is field expert. So it gives more visibility and insight into your folks in the field and it helps the folks in the field stay connected. ServiceMax is one of our top native Salesforce apps specifically for field service. Um, um, Check-ins is the next one and it lets your users check in to an account or a contact with their iPhone or iPad. So it lets them check in and it will show their location. So you could use that for um, salespeople out in the field or field service folks that go out in the field. And then last is again that little blue beaker. That means it's a Salesforce Labs apps, which is free and it's designed by either our customers or employees and it's for you. And it lets you track service hours for your teams. So it lets you track the remaining hours against a service contract. Bingo! Yay, all right, you win the grand prize of $81 and your choice of swag. There are more prizes, so keep playing. Um, and now we're gonna uh, kind of tee up a couple questions for our panelists, and we're gonna start with Stephanie. And the question is, how have you looked at and worked through some of the questions that come up around security? when you're looking at apps? So at AOL, um, we security is a huge thing. I mean, everybody here had an AOL account at some point in time, <laughs> so like we have all your information. Um, <laughs> so one of the nice things about Salesforce apps as opposed to going out and getting a new product is that Salesforce has already gone through our security review. So if you're doing an app, it's a much more condensed security review from our IT people. So the nice thing is you say, hey, I'm going to go get this app. Normally, the app people have their own little security package that you can just download from them after you install the app. You send it to our IT people. They give the check off. Um, to get a new software security approved is typically anywhere from four to six months. For me to get an app approved is two to three days. So that's one of the reasons why we go to apps first with security. Right. And um, Tyler, how do you evaluate apps? What's your process when you look at apps? That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of apps out there, and it's, it's difficult. So the, the first thing is obviously you have, a, you have a business need. You have a problem that you're trying to solve. And you, know, you can try to come up with a way to you know, customize an object or to create a new app yourself or put a bunch of development hours into it. But the, the great thing about the app exchange that we go to first is that um, you know, somebody has probably already had this problem before. And they've probably found a good way to solve it. And especially with the Salesforce Labs app, 
apps, Salesforce Labs apps. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's some really good solutions out there for um, for those business problems. And the other thing is that the App Store has a lot of free apps, um, a lot of ones. And, and Stephanie had a great story about Timba surveys. You know, you have a, a problem that you want to survey your customers, and so. You can go to the App Store and find Timba surveys that's free, and you can put it in a sandbox, and you can download a couple free ones, um, put them into a sandbox, test them out, see how they work. Um, and then you know, it may lead to using something that's a little bit more robust once you get buy-in from you know, your executive teams or your other teams and things like that. So um, starting with the free apps, I think, is, is the um, one thing that really helps uh, just to kind of get your foot in the door um, and to, yeah, to see what else is out there for you to solve those problems. Great. And Doug, I'm going to put you on the spot and awesome. throw you a curveball and <laughs> end right. on a fun note. A fun note. Okay. But if you had unlimited funds and resources and could create any app out there that doesn't already exist, what would that be? Um, something that would make my Dallas Stars actually win the cup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> more than once in my lifetime. Uh, we're hoping for a good year. Uh, no, uh, I would... I would say I would put more emphasis in, into analytics. While we have put a lot of, uh, of effort inside of Salesforce around analytics, it's really about going even deeper. Um, trying to find every piece of minutia you can get will really start to turn your business around because you, if you don't understand those little bitty gaps, you can't find those gaps, you, you can't really improve the process, you can't improve your business, you can't uh, increase your revenue. I would really push money and focus there. The second place would be really around the social aspect, the way that uh, the world is changing. It, it's hyper sensitive to any little piece that goes on. Stephanie had a great uh, 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 thought and, and, and example about the uh, anytime someone goes and puts something on the web, they're able to track to that. I would say those two areas. Great. Thank you. All right, we have 15 seconds left, so we're going to wrap up so you can get to your next session on time. Everyone, thank you for um, being part of our session this morning, and have a great last day of Dreamforce.